it is one of the most powerful reminders I've ever heard because it was the most practical thing what recently happened. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all those martyrs and shuhada highest status in Jannah al Firdaus. Say Ameen with me. The question comes why bad things happen, especially to good people. Or usually people ask, why me? Um, and let me start by, by just giving you some practical, practical um, in a practical approach, that our life is like a roller coaster. One day you will be extremely happy because some favor of Allah will come. And then next day, next moment, next week, next month, you'll be extremely sad because a difficulty will come. And it is regardless of your faith, regardless of how practicing you are, whether you are a party animal or you are a Malvi or Sheikh of your family, we all have to go through this. Sometimes you'll be extremely happy, sometimes you'll be extremely sad. Sometimes you'll enjoy the favor of Allah, sometimes you will going to get tested by difficulties and some of the hardships. The question comes, why bad things happen to good people? This is extremely important topic because it does not even only talk about the practical side of it, it actually talks about the aqidah issues. Why bad things happen? Because you have to understand, it's really easy to believe in Allah when things are going fine. When I'm getting raises, when I'm getting profit in my business, it's really, really easy to give charity and it's really easy to believe in Allah. But when something really bad happens, then you start questioning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start doubting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is Allah? Where is Allah's love and mercy and compassion? I'll give you a few examples before I can start. So, um, and all of us have to go through. Some of you are students, you will select one major, medical studies. And after two, three years, you will realize, maybe it's too hard for me, I need to change my major. Then it gets difficult for you. This is a kind of difficulty. Some of you have gone through a divorce or a broken engagement. And you must be saying, I didn't do anything wrong. Why it happened to me? Some of you are married, but you might not have kids because it's a lost planning. You might ask, why me? Some of you have kids and you might have the kids with autism or with any other developmental delays. And you might ask, why me? Some of you might have kids physically stable, mentally stable, but they are disobedient to you. You might ask, why me? Some of you might have a jobless career for the last six years, even though your resume is pretty heavy. You might ask, why me? So each and every aspect of our life, we have these struggles and these difficulties, and we just force this question, why bad things happen to good people? So I will just briefly discuss three points here. And I want you to pay close attention, because this is a serious topic. So I want you to pay close attention as our many options have changed. First, we'll discuss why bad things happen to good people. Second, we'll discuss how to react when bad things happen from a religious side, not from the medical side. And third, difference between punishment and test. So let's just start the first one. Why bad things happen? You know, if you go to a global Muslim community, anywhere in the world, talk to Muslim and ask him, tell me why bad things happen. Tell me why difficulties come. You know what they were going to say? I have concluded all of their answers in three points. I'm just talking about misunderstanding right now. You will ask someone, so why bad thing is happening? Why you have to go through this jobless career? First is having paranoia mentality. Uh, Imam Saab, I'm jobless because there is a jinn. Have you ever heard that? Really? <laughs> Even jinn might be saying, I didn't do anything. <laughs> why are you going through divorce? There is a jinn. You don't need one. <laughs> you are one. <laughs> right? So first thing is paranoia mentality. Put the blame on these jinn and magic. 
why this is happening? Because of magic, or some say black magic. First of all, magic is magic. They don't have color, black or white. Magic is not racist like some of our politicians. Magic is magic. It's not black or white. Some people say because of evil eye, this is happening. And I'm just for the record, I'm not denying the fact that these things exist and we believe in this as a Muslim. Angels and jinn. But to have that paranoia mentality, whenever something bad happens, there must be a jinn. Let's do ruqya. Let's wait and figure out if we are doing something wrong. Right? So that's the first mistake. Second misunderstanding. If you ask people why bad things are happening, they will say, um, it's a sign that maybe I'm sinful and Allah is punishing me. Uh, not really. Because prophets were not sinful and yet they were tested severely. Yes or no? Yes. Wallahi, I have, I, have, I have seen one couple personally. I know them. They, are married for, they were married for 10 years and they didn't have kids for the first 10 years of their marriage. And you know how our society is, right? The mother-in-law, alayhi salam, keep asking, keep teasing the daughter-in-law. When you are giving me the good news, and a point came when the mother-in-law said to daughter-in-law after a few years that, you know, Allah is not giving you a baby because you must have done something wrong in past. It is a punishment of your own sins. Where do you got this from, mother-in-law? <laughs> Even this is a misunderstanding. Ibrahim Ali Salam didn't do anything. He was not given kids until the old age. Same thing for Zakaria Ali Salam. So this logic doesn't work. Third misunderstanding. If you ask why bad things are happening, some people might say, and this is a mistake. Maybe Allah doesn't love me. Even this is wrong. The most beloved people were the prophets. Yes or no? Yet they were tested severely, which we cannot even imagine in that way. So now the question comes, then why bad things happen, especially to good people? The answer lies in one hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah ta'ala idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when Allah loves someone, when Allah loves someone, then he puts him or he puts her under difficulty. So now next time when someone asks you why bad things are happening to good people, you have to tell them because Allah loves these good people. And the practical manifestation of this hadith is actually the life of all the prophets. Allah loved them and yet they were tested. So do you understand this first point? I don't think so. You all are saying yes, but if you think rationally, there is one small confusion which might come in your mind. I'll give you an example. So I just quoted the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it's a sign of Allah's love when you're going through a tough phase of your life. Now let us understand this. I have two kids right now. If I'll call my son Hibban, he's five years old right now. If I'll call Hibban, come here. And my son walks to me. And I'll say, Hibban, I love you. And my son will respond it back, I love you too, Abba. And I'll look at his face and I will slap, tapak. <laughs> By the way, I'm not abusive father, just, just FYI. I'm just giving this example. He will grab his cheek and he will give me a dirty look and he will say, Abba, you just told me you love me. What kind of love is this? He have every right to ask this. Now, when we are going through a difficult phase in our life, we are looking for the help of Allah to take us out from that phase. And Allah is saying, since you are going through that difficult phase, it's a sign of my love. How to understand this? How to rationalize this? The words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There are scholars who worked on this field, but since I don't have time to tell you all the reasons, so I'll tell you a few reasons how to understand the wisdom behind a calamity that it is coming from the mercy and the love of Allah. When bad things are happening, it's happening because of love of Allah, because of few reasons. And I'll tell you, inshallah, briefly. First reason, you have to understand that bad things are happening because of Allah's love and Allah's mercy. Number one, because Allah is knowledgeable, Allah knows the future, and we do not know the future. Let's, let's take this example. So let's say, 
if you are going through a tough divorce, going through divorce is not easy, especially in this country. Divorce laws are so complicated. Physic, uh, these psychological pain, emotional pain, and then eventually you have to go through that legal process, it will give you anxiety. So divorce is not easy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you might not be happy with this person. You will live a miserable life if you will live forever with this person. So for a short-term stress, Allah gave you long-term peace. And after five years, ten years, now you are happy with someone, now the other person is happy with someone. So it's a sign of Allah's love. Maybe at that time it was hard for you to comprehend, right? I'll give you my example. So the brother was saying very strangely that my undergrad was in fashion designing before I became imam, right? You can see from my taupe colors, right? Very strange and weird designs, right? I didn't design this, just FYI. <laughs> Now the point is, when 12 years back, when I was designing jeans, I remember working for Old Navy in 2008, designing legging jeans. And now I'm Imam, almost after 12 years. If you will ask me, are you happy now or were you happy before? And that was a challenging decision for me, to change the field completely after studying this. Wallahi, I will say I'm 10 times more happier now as I was before. Not taking anything away from fashion designing field. Mashallah, it's also a good business. But I did what I have a passion about. At that time, I was, I was in stress. Should I do this? Should I not do this? But subhanAllah, after a long time, Allah might open the door and tell you that this is the reason why that bad thing, that difficulty happened to you. SubhanAllah. There are so many other reasons, but again, moving forward with this. So first reason is Allah knows and we do not know. So even if you do not understand the wisdom behind it, think that Allah is more knowledgeable. He knows the reason, He knows the wisdom. Second, it's a way when, when we are going through a difficult patch in our life, it's a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly forgive our sins and elevate our status in dunya and akhirah because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said it. There are numerous ahadiths in Sunan Tirmizi and Abu Dawud where Rasulullah sallallahu said when a person is going through a difficult phase and he's patient, that's the condition, he's patient on that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive his sins consistently. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the one who is from Sabirin. Ameen ya Rabb. Third reason, and I'll just move to the next point, but third reason. One of the reasons how we have to understand the bad things are a sign of love of Allah or bad or difficulties are a sign of mercy of Allah is because, let's take the example of a person. You know, if you are one of those person who is constantly receiving the favors of Allah, whatever you touch, it turns into gold. In job, you are getting, getting constant raises. In masjid, in community, you are getting respect. In family, you are getting constant respect. And if you are, God forbid, ungrateful person, then eventually ego and arrogance can creep in your heart because whatever you do, it's a success. And then ego and arrogance will creep in your heart. You know what will happen? Not only your dunya will be destroyed, but even your akhirah will be destroyed because Rasulullah Sallallahu said it. So to make you humble and to save your akhirah, and to crush your ego, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his immense mercy destroys your ego and by that destroy your dunya so that you can become more humble so that your akhirah can be saved. How many people we have seen in our life that something really bad will happen to them and then they will come close to Allah. <laughs> How many people we have seen in our life. But this is a reactive approach. They are waiting for something to happen. We need to be proactive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us proactive. Ameen, Ya Rab. Okay, now the point number two. I will just conclude. I have only five minutes and 27 seconds to be precise. Uh, point number two. Um, how to respond? How to respond when bad things happen? There are two aspects of it. One is religious, spiritual aspect, which I will going to mention. The other is a medical aspect. I know mental health is a taboo topic in our community, but please, 
Just like you guys are here today for the spiritual side of it, you have to go for a med for a therapy for your, for the psych uh, to your psych psychiatrist for the medical side of it also. So I'll just give you the religious side of it. How to manage yourself or how to respond when bad things happen. You know, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, is that asabat hum musiba, qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Very famous words, right? What does it mean? Inna lillahi, we belong to Allah. We are the property. We are the ownership of Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And to him we will return. Just for the records, this is not to be said only when a Muslim dies. Allah says whenever you are getting any bad thing, whenever you are getting any difficulty, you have to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Now it does not mean that when you look at the face of your spouse, you have to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Okay, coming back on a serious note. Just, 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 this was done to grab your attention. Now on a serious note, what does it mean? This have two parts. First is inna lillah. Second is wa inna ilayhi rajiun. First is we are the ownership and property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean? I'll give you an example. For the last few years, I'm traveling a lot and I'm doing a lot of rental car whenever I travel. I usually use enterprise. I'm a gold star customer of enterprise. So sometimes they will give me Dodge Charger, my favorite car. Sometimes they will going to give me Lincoln. And these rental, they are most, most of the times they have new cars. And you will going to really love these cars when you yourself have 2007 Honda Odyssey, right? You will really love it, check engine light on, right? Now I actually sold that car last year. But anyway, now, no matter how much I love these rental cars, but when the evening time will come, I know that I'm not the owner, Enterprise is the owner. I have to return these cars even though I love the drive. Because somewhere in my heart, I know I'm not the owner. This is my attitude with these rental cars. Similarly, I get a job, great job, 300,000, 400,000. After six years, Allah took it back. The first thing which should come from my tongue, inna lillah. Allah, you gave me, you took it back. I didn't deserve to start with. This will change our attitude completely. Allah, you gave me son, and after six years, somewhat happened, you took it back. Inna lillah. You gave me this life. You have a right to take it back. When we will going to say this from the bottom of our heart, Wallahi, our, our approach will be changed towards this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to say this from the bottom of our heart. Ameen, Ya Rab. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Just the last two things before I can end, inshallah. The second thing is the emotional reaction, what we usually, what we usually show. So, for example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was passing by a cemetery and he saw a woman who was crying over a death of her son. Her son passed away. So those mothers, can you feel that a son passed away and you are crying on the grave? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed by this woman and he advised her, ittaqiyullah wasbiri, that you have to be patient and have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this woman doesn't know who that this person is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she said, Ilayka anni. Rasulullah, mind your own business. Again, he did it, she didn't know that this person was Prophet Muhammad. Mind your own business. You don't have any idea of what I'm going through. My son passed away. Interestingly, Rasulullah had more than enough idea how it feels when a son passes away. He lost his three sons. He was quiet. He left. Someone told her that this was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She went to apologize, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said these five words, such beautiful words. He he said, "Inna masabru inda sadmatil ula." He said to her, "The real reward of patience. Again, the real reward of patience is when the calamity and difficulty strikes you first." at that second, at that moment, not after a few weeks. Everyone become patient after that. When you get the text message that you will be fired, what is your reaction? 
When you get those legal documents from the lawyer of your spouse that you are divorced, what will be your reaction? At that moment, the patience of reward is lying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to react in a way which is most pleasing to him. Ameen, Ya Rab. Just the last thing before I can end, inshallah, because I know time is up. Um, just the difference between difficulty or punishment and test. Again, punishment and test. Allah have used the word musiba in the Quran to explain both punishment and test. And I'll give you an example because it's very important for us to distinguish between both these terms. So if you are driving on one of these roads in Washington, D.C., speed limit is 65 miles per hour, but we are Muslims, so you know our speed limit, 85 miles per hour. And then all of a sudden, blue and red light will blow up, cop will come, you got pulled over, and you will get a ticket. When you will get a ticket, you look at a ticket, it's a speeding ticket, and then you will look at the face of the cop, and you will think it's a difficulty, and difficulty is a sign of Allah's love. Actually, this ticket is a sign of Allah's love. No, this is a sign that you are stupid. <laughs> because you were speeding. There were few things which you could control, but you did not control. You were speeding, and you got ticket. Do not mix this as a sign of Allah's love. This is a punishment. You are punished because you are doing something wrong. So this is punishment. But let's say if you are driving within a speed limit, and someone else, because they were texting, they will bang their car into your car. Now it's a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things were out of your control. And you have to think, maybe actually there have to be some wisdom. We, you could only understand few wisdom. And then just leave the trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's extremely important for us to understand the difference between punishment and test. And the reason, and I will conclude with this, the reason for that is because if you don't understand the difference between punishment and test, you will end up in either of the two extremes. This, happened a lot, this happens a lot with the kids. Either you will blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, even though you are doing something wrong, and you won't learn from your mistakes. And the other extreme is you will going to blame yourself for everything, even though you cannot do anything. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand this, inshallah, and to increase our iman. Hopefully you will have a great, great conference. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.